Welcome back to MPWF War Episode 7. My name is DJ Johnny Feelgood. And this is Tyrese Jordan. And we're here calling this tag team matchup. And Tyrese, we've seen a great matchup with the Divas. But what about the tag team matchup later on we're going to see tonight? But hang on a second before we get to that. Look at... A nice dropkick by... A huge dropkick there by Yushihari Atari. And she takes down Michelle McCool. And that is a handful to say every single time. So we're just going to call her Pick Lady or Atari. Take it the way you see it. Have it the way you want it. And now... That's how we pick it up, Michelle McCool. But as I was saying before, what do you think about tonight's tag team championship rematch between two hated rival teams and some bad motherfuckers, Jim Jocko and Shift and the Gothic Society? No, sorry, Jim Jocko and Roscoe Jenkins, excuse me, and Shift and Dagger. There's nothing better. Tag team matchups is just fantastic. You get the best of both worlds. Exactly. I mean, you get to see four people out there in the ring at the same time, and now Yushihari Atari with a beautiful inverted DDT there, Michelle McCool, and you can see Yushihari Atari bringing. Very athletic moves to the table here as she now picks up McCool. And now you Shahari Atari here. What a kick there by Atari. Big time kick. And now you Shahari Atari heading to the top rope here. What is you Shahari Atari gonna do from the top here? Um, oh big time. What was that? I didn't, I didn't know. Oh you Shahari Atari out of nowhere. Turning in mid air. I was odd there. Now Atari dragging Michelle McCool to the center of the ring here. And now you Shahari Atari coming up for something big here. Atari screaming here. Oh, what an impact there by Yushihari Atari. Sasha Fierce knocking off Helga. Now Atari going for the cover here on Michelle McCool. Is that it, ladies and gentlemen? What the, what the hell is the referee doing? One, <laughs> two, <laughs> what? three. Okay, oh, we have a winner. Three, what? Did, did the referee only count to two there? What was that? I. Well, ladies and gentlemen, these replays are brought to you by SmackDown vs. Raw 2011. This is your moment by Dragon Age 2, The Rise to Power, and by... <laughs> oh my god, enough of the sponsors. As you see here, the replays of this amazing Divas tag team matchup. I mean, analyze that kick. How sick was that kick there by Yushihari Atari? It was quite fantastic. And then here, the sunset flip powerbomb onto Michelle McCool here, but right into her neck. But, but that referee, whoa. The, the referee seemed a little lost. Uh, Michelle McCool and Helga may have been screwed out of this match here, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I, th I think, I think, um. The pig lady had it had it in the bag, but I would say that Sasha Fish didn't really do as much in the match. But so that's kind of showing the pig lady. But not for nothing, the Sasha Fish. Sasha Fish did compete in a triple threat tables matchup this Sunday, this past Sunday at TLC. But nonetheless, Yushihari Atari and Sasha Fish are victorious here tonight on MPWF for a big victory for these two divas and a great debut for Atari here in the MPWF. And I mean, you have to be impressed by Yushihari Atari after that show at home against. Majorly impressed, majorly impressed. Great victory for them. And now Atari confronting the women's champion here. That's true, if you ever want to be the best female wrestler ever, you have to be the MPWF. You can vouch for that, right, can't you, Tyrese? Yes, I can. Oh, and what a match that would be on our next Mega CPV. Sasha Fierce and Atari, could that happen? I think it should happen. I think it would be quite the spectacle. And Sasha Fierce saying that she wants a match too. Sasha Fierce wants Atari at Starcade. Well, she wants the... She wants the... Get better than what she did before, right? Oh, yeah, wait, exactly. She wants to prove herself. No, no doubt. And here, ladies and gentlemen, comes a man who was screwed at TLC. The Messiah of the MPWF, Joe Eagle. I mean, uh, it, was, it was a TLC this past Sunday in the Fatal 4A main event matchup. That Joe Eagle was about to win the matchup, and Burn Mongo came back, shook the ladder, and Joe Eagle fell from the outside of the ring through two tables. Disgusting impact there, ladies and gentlemen. Disgusting impact, and you can see the effects there as Joe Eagle is busted up. You can see he's bandaged up here, and Joe Eagle is certainly not in a good mood. That's not the bandage you see on him. Don't, don't let that check your mind. This is not gonna stop the Joe Eagle in his tracks. Joe Eagle is gonna come back, and he's gonna prove a point. And he's gonna, and he's gonna, he's gonna be the best. He's gonna retain his championship. Exactly. I mean, Joe, Joe Eagle. I mean, right now, obviously, Joe Eagle wants a world championship. But I mean, what about Ver Mongo? What? I mean, there's obviously going to be hell to pay for Ver Mongo for what he did to Joe Eagle at TLC. 
Joe Eagle cost. If you've heard Mongo cost, Joe Eagle, the World's Heavyweight Championship. Well, of course, if you've heard Mongo, we'll bring what he's so. Couldn't have said it better myself. Hey, he's going to have to start reconsidering his. I said Joe Eagle is not in a happy mood whatsoever, but I mean, this crowd here in Aurora, Colorado, uh, happy to see Joe Eagle. We were in Denver on Sunday yesterday. It's been a lot of uh, been difficult traveling here. And I said, again, thank you to have you here, Tyrese Colin, MPWF War Episode 7. It's my pleasure. Look at Joe Eagle. He is perhaps one of the most intense superstars in the MPWF. I mean, there's no one, no one more intense than Joe Eagle. No one who can bring it like Joe Eagle. He's a true legend and veteran of car wrestling. I can assure you this. The great theme song of that is fantastic. <laughs> That's true as we said, Joe Eagle was robbed of his world title match, of his world championship at TLC by Vermongo. Well, Joe Eagle laying down the law to Ver Mungo, but Tyrese, we're going to be heading backstage as we're going to be heading with Brian Barbados, an upcoming superstar. Hang on a sec, there's Tendencies again, who speared the MPWF chairman earlier this evening. I like that, actually. You know, Tendencies, he has a, he has a kind of thing about him that he doesn't care. He's going to do whatever he, what he likes. Look at it. Look at this. Accusing Brian Barbados of... Att attacking him at TLC. What, what, what would Brian Bobby just have to do with attacking Tennessee's at TLC? Um, I don't know. Brian? Oh, oh, holy oh, okay. Tennessee's now attacking Brian Barbados. Has this man lost his mind? I mean, Tennessee is, oh, like I said oh, oh, oh. many times this night, Tennessee is proving a point. That's what you gotta do in this business. business a dog eat dog world. And now, Tennessee's just beating the hell out of Brian Barbados. And we need to get security back here. His tendencies now. No, no I, I say let him fight. There's nothing better than a backstage ball. Oh, oh, goodness. Jeez, ladies and gentlemen, up next we're going to have ourselves a, a number one contenders match. But tendencies came out of nowhere and beat up Brad Buffett. He's still pissed off about being attacked at TLC. Ooh, who are going to attack tendencies? Have they lost their mind? Somebody obviously didn't want tendencies to win the World's Heavyweight Championship. Is it and now someone shall pay. But why Brian Barbados? Brian Barbados didn't do anything to you deserve You don't know that. that. You didn't see who attacked him. You just know that there was an unknown person who attacked him and asked what tendency he's doing. Anyone comes in this path, he's going to destroy. That's why I like the guy. Goodness, Tennessee needs to, somebody needs to put Tennessee in this place. He's now taking out Barbados and the MPWF chairman. But right now we have a big time number one contenders fatal four-way matchup. The winner of this match will go next week to challenge Sean Angel Blade Stevens in a United States Championship match. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is Lamar James Jackson, who trains uh, in freestyle wrestling at the University of the Minnesota State University. And you can also talk about freestyle wrestling. You know a lot about freestyle wrestling. So yes, I have a second individual in my high school year. Quite the achievement, I would have to say. And Tyrese, I mean, vouch for this. What about, this is another freestyle wrestler here. Tommy Douglas, born out of the Kamloops of Canada. Went to Toronto, Ontario, Canada to train to become a professional wrestler. He's a former internet champion. And I mean, he, um, although he did lose some tendencies at TLC, he's got to be a favorite to win this matchup. No, I don't really like Canadians. Sorry. <laughs> well, there you have it. Tyrese don't like Canadians. I mean, if you're a Canadian viewer, do not let that stop you watching the MPWF. I love Canadians. So. Unless Tyrese obviously has an issue with Tommy Douglas. But you gotta admit, though, even though you may not like Canadians, Tommy Douglas is one hell of a competitor. Let me get in the ring one-on-one -on -one with this guy. I call him. Don't worry about it. Tyrese sounds similar to OG Logan thinking that he can take on Urban. I don't know, I have no idea why my broadcast part is thinking he can beat everybody in the ring. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Douglas, Canada's hero. How controversial would that be if Canada's hero becomes the United States champion? It'd be a disgrace to the United States of America. Well, right here, this man is old. He, he is red, white, and blue here. Reese Bobby, who is still hurt from that fantastic ladder matchup with TLC with Sean Stevens. He's looking 
to get a jump back in the United States Championship. Maurice Bobby, all, as you might say, and I will put a, a quote, hit, unquote, Maurice Bobby is the typical American in most people's eyes. Maurice Bobby is also another freestyle wrestler who did very good in his college years. He's a former NCAA champion. Like I said, he's looking to win the United States Champion and utilizes the brass nuts when he's in the ring, which is elite. And I, for one, don't agree with that. Do you agree with the actions of Maurice Bobby? I absolutely agree with that. Because the simple fact is that he is doing anything and everything in order to win the match. But I guess if you see it this way, it's like Eddie Guerrero. I said, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Exactly. Eddie Guerrero is one of the greatest wrestlers in the world. Maybe I, I, I personally don't agree with Reese Bobby in the way he does things, but like I said, Reese Bobby has a bad entire reach to him, apparently. And ladies and gentlemen, a man who returned last week, Zack Ryder, gets this set. This guy is just a fan. He Zach, get off television. Zack Ryder. Get off YouTube, is get off the wrestling show. I don't like this guy at all. What, what is this guy? What is he wearing right now? Zack Ryder is wearing a special wrestling attire. Zack Ryder is a phenomenal Cannot, not at all. He, what is he doing right now when he comes to a ring, a wrestling ring at that, and pulls like this? He's conforming his homosexuality. Zack Ryder, ladies and gentlemen, is not a homosexual. And Zack Ryder will try and prove that as we head for a break when we return. This number one contenders match will happen.